Hey everyone, it's Imran. I'm back with another one. Okay, what's going on in macro? Stocks uh, flat yesterday as markets kind of awaiting US CPI data on Wednesday uh, and the outcome of this debt ceiling meeting with Biden. Um, so we'll see if they can or they just argue and we get nothing out of it. But markets are probably going to have some sort of reaction. Uh, bank stocks as well. Uh, regional bank stocks reversed their early gains. They also had a ripper rally on Friday, um, but they, they did and they did initially move up, but then got faded. Uh, and then in commodities, precious metals uh, were flat after last week's pullback from those highs in gold. Uh, and energy was firmer, with natural gas up 6% and oil up 2 although slightly fading back today. Uh, looking at vols, we did see vol firmer. Um, US vols up small. They got slightly battered on Friday, um, back down to a 14 handle on at the money S&P. So that's interesting. Uh, commodities vols were softer in general. Uh, with oil and GDX worst hit, a uh, vol and a half in oil there. That's back down to 33 and a half, providing pretty amazing carry given that it's realizing 52 and a half. So, so if you're looking for some gamma, oil has been moving around like an animal uh, and it may well continue to do so. Okay, US stock indices though are in negative carry as well. They've been moving pretty well. Obviously, this tends to happen when you see strong moves to the upside. The vol follows the skew which is steep in equities and the implies come crashing, but the realized remains high because it's a strong realized move to the upside. So we are seeing that, but then carry everywhere else except for FTSE looks positive uh, with Asia providing you kind of the best juice if you are still looking to sell vol. Uh, okay, um, looking at SKU, SKU holding pretty firm, still on a six handle on S&P, 63rd percentile. Uh, other SKUs are drifting back a bit below median levels, but clearly there's some de um, debt ceiling risk being hedged there in S&P SKU. Uh, looking at commodity SKUs, we saw a pop back in natural gas, which had been getting offered, moved into core premium last week, has bounced a little bit. Uh, and then oil SKU, which had got pretty pumped into the 95th percentile, is drifting back down as oil did bounce in spot and seems to be stabilizing. Okay, um, if we look at the charts, what am I looking at? Okay, so those who've been paying attention will obviously be aware that the CDS rates for the US have been spiking pretty dramatically. Um, and that, you know, clearly that's on the back of the debt ceiling concerns. Um, and then the move index has obviously bounced as well. It, it hit lows in April and it has started moving up. And we have been starting to see larger moves in yields as well, whether it's on the back of the bank crisis, whether it's on the back of debt ceiling issues. That interest rate market and credit market is generally starting to move a bit more. Now, the equity market volatility, i.e. the VIX, seems much more sanguine uh, as broad equity indices have held up much better thanks to the mega cap tech earnings obviously beating, although market breadth has absolutely rolled off a cliff. OK, uh, now looking at the VIX, we can see here, you know, did spike briefly, but has gone straight back down to a 17 handle. Now, history does show us that equity markets, and this is EMV, this is something that Deutsche Bank analyzed as equity market volatility. Uh, so they're not just looking at the straight VIX, but basically they're looking at spikes in this thing around uncertainty over government spending and basically showing you that there is historical precedent for equities to care about these type of concerns. And the biggest spike we did see was in that 2011 showdown, that debt ceiling crisis that happened, the US got downgraded, and we saw a material move up in implied volatility. OK, so let's not get too complacent is the basic uh, message, right? So now whilst we've had the 17 handle back on the VIX, the VVIX, which is up here, is failing to revert back down quite so fast. OK, so that's holding. And we already said skews holding in the 60th percentile. So though, at least some of those measures of tail risk are respecting what's going on in the rates market. Now, we did see a large clip trade in the VIX uh, last week on Thursday, I believe it was. It was a 40-60 call back spread uh, where the client sold the 40 calls and bought three times the uh, 60 calls on the VIX to September VIX expiry. It cost, it cost them about $5 million of premium to do that trade. And that is a proper crash hedge type trade. OK, so we would need a serious spike on September VIX for that trade to make any money. But if it did, you'd get long Greeks, you'd get long vol or vol, all the stuff, all the good stuff that's going to spike. And you could arguably make, you know, $50 million out of a $5 million spend. But like I say, you would need a bit of a crash scenario to materialize to make any money out of that. But clearly someone thought it was worth spending $5 million on. OK, um, anyway, so on the back of those sort of dynamics, just. 
be wary of getting too complacent until we either come to a compromise on the debt ceiling or they kick the can down the road, maybe to September, October timeframe, which apparently is being speculated about. Those are the sort of things we'd probably wait to want to see before getting too bullish again on the market at this at this point. OK, um, now, what are we thinking on the dollar? Uh, it's at a big support level, as we mentioned. Uh, if we go back to the weekly chart, we can see Fibonacci retracement here. 50% of that whole rally from um, late 21. We're sitting around here. This is the UUP ETF that I'm looking at, the broad-based dollar ETF. Um, so the level there is around 2740 would be the support line. Um, right now we're trading at 2770, so pretty much there about a percent away. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking that the momentum's improving. We're seeing here a potential weekly momentum divergence if, that, if we do make new lows. On the weekly, we, I, I don't think that momentum is going to go down to a level where it's not going to be diverging. So that's a potential bullish signal on the way. Um, if we look at UUP, where the volatility is, it's on an 8% implied vol. Now, we know if we look back, if it trades back this way, there's a very strong correlation for vol to go higher if the dollar goes higher. OK, so arguably upside volatility, if you can get your hands on it, could perform well in UUP if we were to get a bounce in the dollar. OK, now looking over at our FX Vol dashboard, it is certainly tempting just from our strategy compass um, to do things like buying dollar CAD calls. We've mentioned those before. That's screening as, as a good trade again. Uh, also buying puts on the likes of euro or sterling are looking relatively interesting. But all of these are outright buys of options. OK, and when FX pairs and the majority of them are in positive carry, um, then you know, owning outright options with conviction is a bit more difficult. OK, also, you don't really know what the timing is for this dollar spike. Right. So so you might think oh, we're not really going to get a dollar spike until we see stronger evidence of a recession. And then you get a flight to safety bid maybe on the dollar, which, again, is debatable. Some people think in a recession, the dollar is going to go lower. So who knows? But, you know, if you're not really sure when to call the timing, just owning outright options is pretty challenging. OK. Um, now, looking at the term structure, though, you can see that, you know, these major euro, sterling, all these curves, they're very flat. So even though the implied volatility is quite low, usually when implied volatility is low, you have an upward sloping curve, right, in contango. But in FX, you often get a flat curve even at the lower levels of vol. And that's where we think there might be opportunity in the fact that the curve is too flat. So how would we play it? OK, that's the trade idea for today. Hope you like it. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.